Hi guys, welcome to another Maths tutorial brought to you by Direct Tutoring. Today we're going to look at trig equations. And before we start, I'd just like to introduce the new competition that we're having to win £250 each month in 2021. Full details on how to enter will be discussed at the end of this video, so make sure that you watch all the way through to the end. So we take a quick overview. Trig equations are similar to linear equations, except they include trigonometric terms such as sine, cos and tan. When solving these equations, you'll be looking for angles between 0 and 360 degrees. And if you take this to higher, you can potentially get more than two answers, depending on how complex the question is. You will require the use of a cast diagram in order to solve this, and I'll put a link in the description on our in-depth video on understanding and solving the cast diagram. However, here we'll just take a quick reminder of what the cast diagram looks like. So, it contains the obvious C-A-S-T spelling cast, and that stands for cos, all, sine and tan. So here in this quadrant, sine, cos and tan are all positive. In the S quadrant, sine is positive, cos and tan are negative. In the T quadrant, sine and cos are negative, tan is positive. And in the C quadrant, cos is positive and tan and sine are negative. And each of these ends represents 90 degrees, so here is 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. And you'll notice that these are the key characteristic numbers when you draw the sine and cosine graphs. So we keep that in the back of our minds when we go to solve this. And the other thing is the theta, where theta is the initial angle that you will find. And depending on which quadrant you tick, you will either have to do 180 minus, 180 plus, or 360 minus. So if we take a look at question number one, it says solve the equation cos x equals 0 0.548. So essentially what we have to do is we have this constraint that x is between 0 and 360 degrees. So we need to find the values of x that correspond to cos being 0 0.548. So we rearrange for x. Now, when the cos goes over, it doesn't go over as divide, because technically it is multiplying the x, but with trigonometric functions, you take it as inverse cos. So that is written as cos to the minus 1. And the way that you get that in a calculator is by pressing shift and then cos, and that will give you cos to the minus 1. And then if you put that into the calculator, cos to the minus 1 of 0 0.548, that will give us an angle of 56.8 degrees. So we tick the A quadrant because this value is positive. So cos is positive. Hence, all three of them are positive in this quadrant. Now, the other one we have to tick is where cos is positive. So that will be in the C section. Now, in the C section... The other angle can be found by 360 degrees minus the initial angle. Our initial angle is 56.8. So it's 360 minus 56.8, which gives us 303.2 degrees. And that is how you go about solving this kind of trigonometric equation. You are basically just finding the two values of x that correspond to that y value of 0.548. Question 2 is exactly the same, however we just have a little bit more manipulation we have to do first. So the first step is to rearrange for x, so we will bring the 3 across, so we'll, that will go over as minus, so it will be 5 sine x equals minus 2, and then sine x equals minus 2 over 5. Now there are a couple of ways in which people will solve this. For me personally, I will find shift sign of minus 2 over 5, and that will give us a value of negative 23.5. However, some people neglect the negative sign here in this step and just take 
positive 2 over 5, but keeping the negative in the back of their mind. The reason that I keep the negative is so is that it reminds me of which quadrants to tick. You don't include the negative in the calculations. That's where we replaced the theta with the angle. So what this means is that if x is minus 23.5, instead of ticking a and s, because that is where the sign is positive, we then have to tick the t, which is 180 plus the angle. So once we tick this quadrant to say that sign is negative, we neglect the negative sign. So it just becomes 180 plus 23.5 which will give us 203.5. And the second quadrant in which sine is negative is in the C section. So that becomes 360 minus the 23.5. And that will give us 336.5 degrees. And that's how you would go about solving that problem there. You just have to be careful of the negative. If you get a negative value of x, just remember, tick the opposite quadrants where your trigonometric function is negative, and then once you have ticked them, forget about the minus. Treat it as a positive value, and you cannot get it wrong. If you stick to that convention, you can't get it wrong. So, now it is your turn. In order to qualify for the £250 giveaway each month in 2021, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and comment the correct answer to this question here. Only valid subscribers with the correct answer will be entered into the monthly prize giveaway. The more comments on all our videos published in 2021, the more entries that you will have for the competition at the end of each month. So, this question here, we are looking for the two values of x in which this equation satisfies between 0 and 360 degrees. So we have 2 tan x plus 5 equals minus 4. So it's a very similar manipulation to the last question that we just done. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Leave any comments in the comment section below along with the correct answer from the previous question. And we'll see you in the next video.